So we're going to talk about tree defects and identification of those defects, but today I'm going to focus a little more on the basic tools that we need. Now, in previous presentations, I've talked about the importance of well-maintained trees in a landscape and how they add property, increased property value. Um, and that trees are an important part of the landscape, but they do present a level of risk. All trees present some type of level of risk. And our goal is to determine if that is an acceptable level of risk and how do we, how do we find those things that could present uh, an increased likelihood of failure. Now, what should we be looking at? Well, we basically read the body language of the tree. We look at the roots, we look at the trunk, and we look at the canopy or the crown. When do we look for those defects or when do we look for those issues? Well, really anytime there's something that doesn't look quite right. And that could be after a storm. Um, here in Indiana, we get a lot of thunderstorms and usually after a wind event or something like that, it's a good time to get out and take a look and see if there's any broken hanging limbs or, or perhaps if you had a lot of wind, maybe the roots have been dislodged or you've had some soil failures um, that's caused a tree to lean. So there's a, there's a, that's a good time to look, but it's, all, it's also a good time to check out your trees every year just to see how the trees are doing and if anything's changed over, over the past year. Now, when we talk about risk, again, there's some basic tools that I think are very important in helping us determine that overall likelihood of failure. And that's the most challenging part for any tree care professional is determining that likelihood of failure. So if you look at the basic tools, these are typically non-invasive tools that are easy to get and easy to use, but they can provide a little bit more information about your tree that can be helpful in determining that likelihood of failure, which will lead to what we would determine as our overall risk rating. Probably the most basic tools that I like to carry are a probing device, and this is just a surveyor's pen that I've sharpened the edge off of, kind of like an ice pick, which could be used just the same or a screwdriver. The reason I like the surveyor's pen is because it has one inch increments on it, and I can get an idea of how deep a, a decay cavity is. And then of course my sounding mallet, and this is just an old mallet that's got a fiberglass end on it. We don't want to damage the tree, and what I'm going to do is sound the tree to determine if there's any hollow areas or decayed areas behind the trunk or behind the bark that we may not be able to see. So I'll demonstrate the, uh, the probe here and you can see that I'll look for soft areas on the tree and see if it goes in. Now down here at the root flare we can see that it's going in quite a bit. So there's obviously a lot of decay here that we need to take a closer look at delignified or starting to decay and you can see it's going in quite a bit there also with the sounding hammer or sounding mallet what I'm listening to is just basically the density of the wood fiber for any differences so you can hear this is a lot more solid than down here. So obviously there's some decay behind that. This takes a lot of practice and a little bit of experience and some knowledge about the density of wood materials in order to really be accurate with it. But again, it's kind of a simple way to determine if there's an issue that needs further examination. Since we have an issue with our root flare, we can see that there's obviously a lot of paving over the roots here. And I don't see much of a root flare to begin with. So my guess is we've got a buried root collar, root flare, which has led to this decay. So what, two really simple tools I keep with me are a soil knife. Um, it's got also some um, increments on it to get an idea of depth and used to excavate soil. And then also I found this, neat little <laughs> trowel device. If you really need to excavate a lot of soil, this is a little bit uh, more uh, efficient than the soil knife. But I'll take this and just kind of excavate around the trunk to determine if there's any issues 
rotten roots, or on the case of smaller trees, a lot of times I'll look to see if there is any um, wire basket or twine that could be causing an issue here. But you can see the reason why I'm going down here to see if there's any decay below the soil line as well. So again, you can use a knife or you can use uh, this little garden trowel to, to get, this, get the same, same results. Another real important tool that I don't think is used quite enough is simply binoculars. And this is to get a better look of what's going on up there. Oftentimes we'll look, be looking at defects or conditions of concern that may be 50 or 60 feet or higher up in the tree. And it's amazing what you can see with these things. Or if there's any type of issues up there as far as um, maybe some fruiting bodies uh, from some fungal organisms, or if there's a crack in the branch that may not be visible from the ground. So these are super handy for getting that closer look in the crown and looking at the branches. All the tools that I've shown you so far are just a level two. Non-invasive, just looking at some of the closer details um, with the crown, the trunk, and the roots. Now we've talked about level two assessments and some of the basic tools that are non-invasive. Now you could go to a level three if you just weren't sure about the amount of decay or the extent of that decay. You can use a combination of a couple of tools. This is a, a, my sounding hammer that I was looking at earlier to determine if, the, if it's hollow or if there's decay behind the trunk here. Now one of the things I use this for is to determine where I'm going to use an increment board to determine how bad the decay is or how far it goes into the tree. So looks like, sounds like there's a lot of decay in this area. So what I would do is take, um, and this, this is a tool that's been around for decades. And, and this is an increment board. And it, all it is is a specialized um, bit that goes into the tree. And basically I can pull out a core or a sample uh, to determine decay. And this is also very handy for aging trees, which is typically what it's used for. Oh, another little important tool, and uh, I don't know if you can see them, um, but carpenter ants are another forensic buddy. If you see carpenter ants, that means you certainly have decay. Carpenter ants won't affect live tissue or eat it or consume it or damage the tree. They just let you know that there is decay inside there and they'll, they usually dislodge wood material by colonizing it. Now this would be a level three advanced assessment because I am be invasive into the trunk. And so what I'm doing is just basically coring this to determine the integrity of the wood fiber and also where it's at and how bad or what the extent of that decay is. So I'll take my extraction tool. So I pulled out a small sample here and you can see that uh, it's very crumbly, which is probably indicative of a brown rock. So we've looked at some of the basic tools involved in a level two tree risk assessment and also level three with the increment board. And the thing is, is what this does is gives us a little more information so we can make a better informed decision on that tree defect or condition of concern. Now, one of the things I wanna make sure and point out is the fact that not all of these are bad. I mean, you, every tree has some type of defect or issue, but that doesn't mean the tree can't overcome it or it's gonna become a greater likelihood of failure. So if you do suspect an issue which presents an unacceptable level of risk, I recommend calling an ISA certified arborist, and especially one that is tree risk assessment qualified, which is a specialized training in the assessment of tree risk in the landscape.